This is a video review of the Wallbox Pulsar Max electric vehicle charger. The Wallbox Pulsar Max is a tethered only charger. So what that means is you've got a cable coming out the bottom to your charge plug at the other end. They don't do a socketed version because it's such a small compact unit. But after using EV chargers for many years, I much prefer a tethered charger. It's a lot more convenient as the cable is already there. You don't have to get your cable out of the car and you don't have to put it back in your car at the end of your charge, charging session. In this case, this is a Type 2 plug on the end for vehicles with a Type 2 charging uh, port. But if I want to charge a Type 1 vehicle, then I just use an adapter. This particular unit is a single phase, so 7.4 kilowatt, 32 amp, with a Type 2 connector, as you've seen. These are also available with a Type 1 connector, and also for the Type 2 versions, available uh, in three phase, 11 or 22 kilowatt. This unit has a 5 meter tethered cable there, but there are also options to have a 7 meter cable. The unit is compliant with the new smart charge point regulations. It has pen fault detection as well, so you don't require an earth rod, and they have a three year warranty. The Wallbox Pulsar Max units also support solar, so you do need a little bit of additional hardware which goes in your consumer unit. But if you have solar panels on your house, then you can charge your electric vehicle only on solar generated electricity. They also support load balancing, so if you've got two or multiple EVs with multiple car chargers, then it will balance the load between them all. And it's also got something called power boost, so if the demand of the house increases, then it will juice the current to the charger. And then when the uh, house load reduces, it will then increase the load to the vehicle. The lights on the charger are looking rather washed out through the camera and are probably looking white to you, but in real life this is all bright green. It's just not coming through like that on my camera. So jumping back in time, this is the box when it's new, so let's have a look at what you get inside. That's just packaging. And then this is what they call the toolkit. So in here we've got the installation guide. This is the holster, so the wall bracket which allows the Type 2 connector to plug into. Here we've got uh, user details inside, do not discard. I have already had a look at this, so cut the um, label there. I can't understand really what this card is. It just seems to be a barcode to the app. But anyway, that will probably become clear later on when the unit is installed. And then in here, we've got the screws and fixings. So there is another grommet which I would imagine is for rear entry because I can already see it exists there when you're having bottom entry for your incoming mains cable. Two wall plugs, some screws with uh, um, posi drive heads. So three larger screws, uh, sorry, yeah, three larger screws, two smaller screws. So that will be for mounting the charge unit and then also the holster and then some small screws here which we for mounting the inner cover and two tiny little um, screws there which will be for holding the uh, outer frame and probably an inner cover I'm not sure anyway there's two there and then this is the unit itself these are a little bit bigger than the original Pulsar Plus unit, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we've got charge cable there with a Type 2 plug on the end. Interestingly, they've redesigned this um, rubber cap and it now goes internally, which I've never seen one like that before. Normally a rubber cap would be externally, 
which would then protect the connector if you were to drop it onto the ground, particularly if you're dropping it on a hard surface. Whereas this connector, this sorry, this rubber cap isn't giving you any protection around the edge. But let's see whether that fits inside the holster. Well, it does. That's clever. That's very clever. So what they've now done is replace the external rubber cap which stopped you using this and come up with this internal rubber cap. I've never seen anyone else doing that. So then that still allows access to that knockout in the top which the holster grips. So that's very clever. As to whether you really need it, I'm not sure because when it's in there anyway, it is weatherproof. So whether you do really need to make these pins watertight, I'm not sure. It can only help, but it's just one more thing to do. You've got to put that in before you put that in the holster. And it does make that a little bit more awkward to put in. But anyway, maybe it's, maybe it's better when this is all mounted on a wall. But yeah, very clever, very clever idea. But anyway, we'll see what that's like in reality when this is all installed and mounted up. And in terms of size, this new Pulsar uh, Max is larger than the original Pulsar Plus. But if I, oh, if I just put that side by side there, you can see it is rather bigger, but it's still one of the more compact, neatest wall chargers on the market. And the original Pulsar Plus uses these external rubber caps on your Type 2 connector here but that does stop you putting it into the holster with the cap on, so consequently they're just left hanging all the time. But this new cap, the new internal cap, does mean that that now works with the cap, which is nice. So this new Pulsar Max charger is very similar to the previous generation Pulsar Plus. It's just slightly scaled up. You've still got bottom cable entry there and rear cable entry there if you want it and you'll also see it now comes with a mounting frame so am i going to be able to do this one-handed yeah so now you mount that on the wall first so insulation is a lot easier and then the unit will then just drop down and slide onto that mounting frame so much easier to install. And then to access the inside, this is all greatly improved as well. Previously, the two halves snapped together and once it was snapped shut, it was very difficult to release it. They did provide you a tool, which is basically like a little credit card, a bit of plastic, which you could get in between the join and crack them open. But it was once it was shut, it was really, really tight. And uh, I've done it before and actually cracked the plastic trying to open them back up whereas now you just get this external frame hiding the fixings that's going to be much easier to release and then you've got fixings around here to get inside so let me go and get a torque screwdriver so these are t20 so you have two t20 uh, torque screws fitted yeah, from the factory in the packaging and two are removed and are in the uh, little fixings bag so let's just remove these so while this does externally look like a scaled up Pulsar Plus it is obviously an all new design and there's also a lot more space in here to work and getting your cables terminated up there so there's your rear entry if you want to use it that's all hard plastic molded into the case so if you were to use that you'd have to drill this out and fit that other rubber grommet which again is showed you is in that bag or use um, bottom entry here straight up into your terminations up there you've got live one neutral PE and PE2 there and then you've got a ribbon cable here going to the uh, circuit board which is mounted in the case here so you could unplug that if you needed to this is pretty light so i suspect you wouldn't need to so overall it's a much easier installation and because 
this is now snapping onto the mounting frame. Obviously you put your screws through there to mount that on the wall first. There's no holes in the case, so this is all kept waterproof. Much easier just screwing that to the wall and then dropping the connector down onto it, making your terminations, putting the lid on, and it's all nice and waterproof. And actually, in terms of waterproof, you've got this rubber seal all the way around here. So yeah, you can see that's overall a much better design. So I'm not going to cover the installation of this because obviously an electrician will be doing that. But if you are an installer, I'll quickly just show you the installation manual here. So uh, let me just look at the information you might want to see. So here we go. We've got the 7.4 kilowatt model, 11 kilowatt and 22 kilowatt, obviously to use the 11 and 22 kilowatt, you need three phase electricity. Your cable selection is up to 13 square millimeters. So that must be the incoming uh, supply cable. Uh, external RCCB type A, residual current protection DC six milliamp. Um, and then here we've got the part number structure some safety warnings here's the tools required a hammer really oh, just putting in the wall plugs I guess drill pencil flat blade screwdriver Phillips screwdriver actually um, posse drive not Phillips cutting pliers t20 and t25 torx tape measure utility knife spirit level and then there's the fixings which are in the jiffy bag and then obviously you mount your wall plate up wall plate mountings again uh, take the cover off to get to the uh, uh, to get to the internals there drop it onto the wall plate this is if you've got rear cable connection where you would um, come in through the back panel there here's your connections which you can pause the video if you want to have a closer look at that. And then you've got a dip switch there, which you can fix the current. Um, not very often you would want to be doing that actually. And then you simply close it up. Uh, so yeah, on the terms of that, you'll be um, in the UK, be 32 amp. Uh, then mounting the plug holder and then registering the charger in the app and that's it by the looks of it there we go one thing to bear in mind when you're installing this is just the access you need so when you're snapping the charger unit down onto the mounting plate at the back you've got these two uh, t15 torque screws either side there to hold the unit onto the back plate and then when you're done put the cover plate on and then you've got the t20 torque screw at the bottom there just to hold that on wall box do provide some half decent screws and wall plugs which is nice to see because so many manufacturers just use the cheapest of cheap wall plugs and you end up throwing them away every time so these can be used these require an eight millimeter hole if you want to use them one small issue it's a very minor gripe though is the screws that hold the uh, holster are countersunk whereas the surface in there that you're screwing down on is flat so ideally a flat head screw would be better but uh, you can obviously use a cup washer or use your own fittings however the other thing that would be nice it would be great if there was a flat surface on this somewhere so you could use a spirit level ideally a flat surface on the bottom and then it would allow you to get this mounted perfectly horizontally but it's not a big issue you can just do this by eye um, but the surf all the surfaces of the holster here are all rounded so i was wrong you cannot use the rubber cap in the end if you're going to use the holster just like the previous generation uh, polestar plus 
while it does sort of fit in there it doesn't hang down properly and uh, it actually pushes the rubber cap off its cord so the rubber caps to be used if you're not using the holster if you're just going to use the holster you just put that there like that and if you're not using the holster the way the charger is designed like the original version it is tapered so you can coil the cable around here and leave your connector hanging obviously you would coil the cable up but you would leave it connect your connector hanging like that and in those scenarios you would want to just make it uh, weatherproof with the rubber cap so when you've had your wall charger installed straight off the bat this will run like a dumb wall charger it'll run at 32 amp 7.4 kilowatt or whatever the dip switch has been set to inside so if i just plug this into a vehicle the vehicle will start charging it's doing the communications with the vehicle and there we go now it is charging but of course you're going to want to use the smart features so at this point you're going to want to install the wallbox app on your phone in your user manual on page 30 is a qr code to your app store so you can download the my wallbox app for both apple or google and your user details card seems to be only the same just a qr code to uh, get you that app so when you've installed the Wallbox app, I've already got it running on the phone because I've already got those uh, Pulsar Plus units. But you then go into the app and at this point you can press the plus to add a new charger. And then you can scan the barcode on the side. And that's basically going to enter the serial number for you. And then you can add it. So now the charger has been added to the app. It's now going to connect to it using Bluetooth, which we just say pair, pair. There we go. That's now going to communicate with the charging unit on Bluetooth. So we will just confirm some of the details there so the next prompt is to enable cloud connection so that's basically connecting the unit to your Wi-Fi that's if you have Wi-Fi that reaches where your wall box is installed so I'm just going to add this one to the Wi-Fi so you enter your Wi-Fi password and then the Pulsar Max will connect to your Wi-Fi but you've also got the Bluetooth connectivity as well so when that's done, it will then prompt you if there's any firmware updates and most likely that will be the case. There will always be a firmware update to get when, a, when you unpack a new unit. So we can just go ahead now and install those software updates. Installing these software updates can take quite a while. So you'll probably just want to walk away and leave it at this point. But you'll notice when they've been done because the uh, charge unit will reboot and these LED, these status LED lights will change and flash and uh, when it's solid green like that it's been rebooted and ready to use. So now the unit has updated its software and rebooted I can see I've now got the Pulsar Max here in my list of available chargers so I can select it and it's going to connect to the unit So the things you can do in the app here is you can adjust the current on the unit if you want to. Anything from 6 amp all the way around to 32 amp. If I can get that back to 32, there we go. You can lock it. And when it's locked, the LEDs are yellow on the unit. You can unlock it and they go back to green. If you have cheap rate overnight electricity on your energy tariff, you can add a schedule 
and we can make it charge at any time you like but in this case we're just going to say um, 12.30 to 4.30 which is the Octopus Go time and we can say every day and add to schedule. So now the unit is locked and will only charge between those times. If you want to delete the schedule you can just click on it and say delete and now that's deleted and will charge instantly as soon as you've plugged the cable into your vehicle. And then at the bottom of the app here we've got your energy insights. So this is your charging stats, all your charging sessions and costs and you can look at it on a weekly, monthly or yearly basis. I've got no information here because this is a newly installed charger so there hasn't been any charging sessions yet. But if you want to enter your correct electricity cost you go into settings configuration and advanced options i think yeah and here you can put in the price of your energy which in this case uh i don't know what it is um it's about 38 pence i think but anyway i'll have to dig out the bill to have a look at that and then we can put it in the right price there under settings there's various things you can do under advanced options you can also change the status of the halo LED lights you need to be communicating with it locally over Bluetooth which at the moment I'm on Wi-Fi so I'm just going to switch over to a Bluetooth connection and what you can do is you can turn off the halo light if you don't want this glowing on the front of your house you can turn that off and say save and then I think the unit does a reboot but it basically then turns off this light and this light will only come on when there we go it's turned off now so the light will only come on when you plug in the vehicle um, for a few seconds so I'll just test this now as you can see the halo light is off so we'll get the charge cable and put that into this Renault Kangoo van and then as you can see straight away the halo light comes on and then after a few seconds that will go off until the status changes so this is something new as you can see when I plugged the van in there the, the uh, charger went into a standby mode and didn't actually start charging and up on the app we've got this new screen which is part of the new UK regulation when it comes to smart chargers and part of those term, terms and conditions that I accepted when I joined the app to the charger and it says here Action delayed. The UK regulator asked to delay changes to energy demand. Your action will take place in the next 10 minutes. So basically it's delayed the charging of the vehicle. If I wait, it will start charging in 10 minutes, but I can just press skip here. And then that's going to send the action to the charger there and the vehicle is now charging. But this is something that all UK uh, smart chargers now have to do and comply with so they're all going to be the same in terms of that but I've now stopped the charge so I'll put the cable back I got a notification to my mobile that the vehicle had stopped charging and uh, as we can see halo lights gone off and it's all gone back to green on the app the new regulations which came out in June 2022 in the UK is all about matching the demands of electric vehicle charging to the grid and a charger such as this will be compliant with that and as a customer you can then take advantage of cheap rate overnight electricity and use these new tariffs such as intelligence from Octopus. So if you want to know more about the regulations I'll put a link to uh, some further information in the video description below. This is why I like the Wallbox products because the app is very simple and everything you need from a, uh, a smart wall charger is here. You've just got your uh, scheduling, you've got your stats if you want to use that and you can lock it and unlock it and you can adjust the current. It's all very simple and you get those notifications. If you've got that additional hardware and you've got solar panels that is all under upgrades but I don't have any of that hardware 
so none of this is applicable for me in this case but if you had solar panels then you've got full solar integration and you can decide to only charge your car when you've got excess solar energy being generated and you can also do low balancing if you had multiple chargers on one site I'll quickly run through some of the other things you've got here this is where you can change the naming of your charger and uh, your country and time zone under connectivity you can turn wi-fi off if you wanted to do that so there would be no wi-fi connections to that charger so it would only be bluetooth between your mobile and the unit so only local connectivity and under advanced options this is where you can control that halo light as i've already showed you you've got private charge protection by auto lock and you've got an auto lock timeout um, i've never used that so i'm assuming that is a function that when you disconnect you can set the charger to automatically go into uh, into the lock to stop anyone else accessing it after you have used it and under here you can uh, change your um, energy cost for that uh, tracking I do like these wool box uh, units they're just uh, easy to use um, stylish very simple um, good looking design they do come in different colors as well and in my case all I do is set the scheduler up so it charges on cheap rate overnight electricity and I just plug in and walk away I'd never have to open the app uh, all the scheduling is done with inside the unit rather than within our vehicles so it's just a case of plug in wait till 12 30 this will switch on charge the vehicle switches off at 4 30 we get notifications for the phones and we just don't uh, don't open the app we just don't need to so very simple and easy to use and just occasionally once every few months i'll open the app and look for a firmware upgrade and install those if that's required so these pulsar max units are very similar to the previous generation pulsar plus but they just comply with the new uk regulations that the charging can be delayed to help with the grid balancing uh, the unit is that little bit bigger but as far as functionality goes exactly the same as the previous generation so i hope you found this video useful if you have please do click the thumbs up button that really does help and if you want to know more about electric cars subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next video